Welcome to Teen Talk Virtual Edition. My name is Leslie Thompson. I'm Director of Adult Programs at the Sid Richardson Museum. And before I introduce the program and today's participants, um, I'd actually like to first acknowledge and uh, recognize the original inhabitants of the land that we are on with a land acknowledgement. So we, the Sid Richardson Museum, respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who have lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid would like to especially acknowledge and pay respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes, which include the Waco, Kachai, Tawakoni, and Tauvea, upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. So in addition to members of museum staff, we have a special guest with us today. Um, so I'm going to go around and introduce each person. So after I say your name, um, just say a quick hello so folks at home watching can see you. Um, so first I've got Shelby Orr. Hi everyone. And she is Director of School and Family Programs. Then I've got Janie Cumming. Hi. And she is Guest Services Manager. Then I've got our special guest with us, Erin Star White. Hello everyone. And she is Director of Community Education at Fort Worth Botanic Garden Brit here in Fort Worth. And then I've got Scott Winterode. Hello everyone. And he is Director of the Sid Richardson Museum. And then finally, I've got Betsy Thomas. Hello. And she is Director of Education Resources. So um, for those who are not familiar with TN Talk, this is a program designed to help us slow down the art viewing process. Um, you might ask, well, why is that important? Um, studies have actually shown that many museum visitors spend an average of 10 to 15 seconds with one work of art. And I don't know about you, but my mind cannot process everything that I see in an artwork in 10 seconds. Um, so Tea and Talk is here and designed to help us pause and breathe, slow down and really look at one work of art, um, which we'll be doing today for 10 minutes. Um, and in those 10 minutes, we'll share observations um, and what we notice in the painting. Um, another thing you might be asking is, well, why look at art with other people? Um, well, while there's certainly a time and a place for looking at art by yourself, which I fully encourage and enjoy doing myself, um, I believe that there's a lot to be said for looking at artwork and talking about artwork with others. You know, everyone comes from a different background. Um, everyone has different life experiences and everyone sees things differently, um, both interpretively, but also quite literally, um, you might notice something that someone has never noticed before. Um, so I found both in real life and through this program that having a shared experience around a work of art uh, really enriches, enriches my overall experience. And um, I've heard some similar comments from people who participated in this program too. So um, with that, let's look at some art together. Um, so I've got an image on the screen of the painting we'll be looking at today. And this is a painting from our collection at the Sid by Charles Russell. And I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. So while I do that, everyone go ahead and take a look at this painting um, and share one thing that you notice. I'll start. Um, so I have the great fortune of being able to live with this collection. And this is one of the only pieces that um, is cold. So the first thing I notice that jumps out at me is the cold wind that I see. Okay, so yeah, picking up on kind of the time of year um, and feeling feeling the, the cold, the temperature of the painting. What else do you notice? I'll jump in. Uh, what really struck me initially, I've never seen this painting in person or in reproduction, is how abstract that background is. If you were to take away those figural groupings and maybe a little bit of the, the grass, it could very easily be like um, a contemporary abstract painting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so picking up on the background um, and the way that the, the background is painted um, could also be seen in a very abstract manner um, if you take away yeah, all of the details. What else do you notice? I'm always really struck by the bright colors, the contrast of the clothing of especially the main figure on the white horse. Um, just 
how bright the clothing is and detailed. Um, and that's partially also against the sort of gray, white um, background. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So Betsy is picking up on um, kind of this contrast of color. You've got the, the background, the overall scene is kind of very muted, very white, pale. Um, but then you've got the figures in the foreground, particularly that main figure um, has very colorful clothing or blankets on him um, with all those stripes of color. And it really catches your attention. What else do you notice? I'm, I'm focused on the group in that middle and how there's this really interesting geometric angularity to all the spaces in between the horse's legs and then the flanks of the horses, the heads of the horses. There's just this beautiful rhythm throughout all of that. And it's kind of picked up again by that um, colorful garment that we see as well. And there's this mm. beautiful pattern and repetition all across this group. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so again, kind of like taking uh, ourselves out into the more abstract and noticing the shapes um, of the figures, the negative spaces created by the horse. But yeah, especially seeing that um, that blanket on the figure in the, in the foreground and um, the shapes that that's creating. What else do you notice? I'm noticing just going back to Shelby's comment about uh, how cold this painting feels when you look at it um, and noticing how wrapped up um, the figures are. Um, you know, typically, especially with our collection, you know, like Shelby said, um, you don't often see uh, Native Americans depicted in a cold climate um, in our paintings by Charles Rust and Frederick Remington. Um, so this is the most clothing I've seen on um, the indigenous figures. Um, and the figure in the foreground um, wearing that big coat, some of them even have hoods um, or uh, hats. And that figure, yeah, wearing the red blanket that's kind of wrapped around him. There's almost this um, tiny little line of white um, that I, I wonder is like a little bit of frost maybe, if that's maybe a detail kind of depicting, um, it's so cold that the, the moisture from his breath is uh, creating frost on the blanket. I, I don't know, that's just my interpretation. No, I Plus, think it is because the horse is doing the same thing, the white horse. Mm -hmm. and, oh, interesting. And I was wondering what that was on his flank. And then I realized, oh, it's the steam coming out as he's breathing. Yeah, I see the hot breath here yeah. and here. And then if, but the humans too. Uh -huh. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, have to, I, I hadn't noticed it on the horses either, but I'm glad you pointed that out, Scott. Not yeah. only, yeah, the frost on the, um, the chin, but yeah, seeing the kind of the, the wisp of the air from the breath. That's really cool. When you first started this and we were just observing, I was looking at the picture and I, I've, I've been very taken with this picture um, for quite some time, but um, I was thinking how gray it is, but I was really interested in the fact that in the far left, if we move beyond the group that's following behind, there is a glimmer of sunlight coming out under those clouds. So you can see this front coming through in the picture but there's a, a glimmer of light back there. And so it's kind of an interesting contrast as to how cold it feels in the painting, but there's this, you know, an, an end in sight to the cold, I guess. Yeah, maybe some hope in the horizon. Erin, <laughs> were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was also thinking this painting is, seems to be like a meditation on the different states of water. And I hadn't thought about that until I was listening to the comment about the evaporated breath and the frozen um, moisture on the horses and the people. And then you, when you see them walking through this snow, to me, especially around the hooves, it almost feels like they're walking through water, the way he's depicted like that stirring up of the snowfall. It's, and then you think about the clouds and that's water. This is just water everywhere. That's beautiful. I love that interpretation. Yeah, seeing all the different forms of water. And I like that you pointed out the hooves and how they're uh, trampling, walking through the snow, because it is a very interesting effect that the artist has created there with the snow. It does feel like they're kind of wading through water a little bit, um, the way that the snow is kicked up. Okay. It's like a slosh. Maybe the heat from all the, it does look sloshy, doesn't it? I love that. 
I was actually thinking it was more like the snow we recently had during our, our great snowstorm um, because it was so powdery, it would blow. And it, it just seems to me like it's moving really rapidly around the horse's hooves. So it might be something that's not as wet because I think of our Remington paintings that do have snow because <laughs> um, they look, they're much more clear as to where the hooves and things are in those pictures. And um, this is much more dissipating as the wind blows. Right, yeah. What else do you'll notice? I'm looking at the uh, minimal plant life <laughs> in this landscape. Um, and you can see in the background, you know, it's just kind of like um, suggestions of grass, but it, well, obviously when you get into the foreground there, you get individual wisps of grass poking through um, the snow and, and even seeing with them, seeing them blow over um, through what I assume, you know, I assume there's wind um, in this scene. Um, and I really like that, that mm -hmm. element of detail. I think the artist is, Done, has really successfully uh, shown the snow banks, the way it kind of goes, the, um, how the wind is kind of shaped where the snow is. And it looks pretty deep too, looking at those hooves, but I just love the, the rolling little snow, snow banks. Yeah, it's not just a flat surface. You can see, um, yeah, the undulations of the, of the snow of the landscape. I also, speaking about that snow, I really appreciate how the repetition of color. So you have that really shock of blue in the front man's garment, and then you have the blue on the horizon, like Scott pointed out, and then you have the blue underneath some of those grass tufts, almost like Monet would do with shadows, where shadow is never black. It's purple and green and blue, and he's added like some actually quite a bit of blue strokes that you just kind of take in and you don't register them as being pieces of blue on the snow. I like that. So we're picking up on more color um, that we haven't noticed before, starting out with a very bright blue. But yeah, as your eye moves around the, the canvas, seeing the blue in the background on the horizon, um, and Aaron pointing out that even the blue in the shadow um, of the grasses. I love that. What else do y'all notice? I'm interested in the fact that the, the lead horse's heads, the three of them are so plumped together like that. And, and I see this artist do this sometimes, but it's just an interesting shape and, and group that it makes up there, the way that they, they are right up against each other and overlap each other. And also the way he's trying to define them away from each other with the, again, that uh, breath coming out in the cold. Yeah, so looking at the, um, the those three horses, the group of horses um, and the way that um, Russell has packed them together, but also trying to distinguish them from to get each other. I mean, because they're each a different, I mean, pretty much every horse I can see, I think is a different color, a different type of horse. Um, yeah. What else do you notice? I'm noticing um, in the far background too, I mean, I know it's just a um, little uh, pecks of paint back there, but seeing um, maybe who might be in that caravan, um, particularly if you see the Travoy um, mm -hmm. indicating that that is likely probably part, that's the women um, falling behind. So it sounds like, or it looks like it's probably, you know, um, a whole community um, traveling somewhere. Well, we've actually, we've just hit our 10 minutes here. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like we we still have a much deeper to go, but this is just um, scratching the surface of what 10 minutes can provide for you uh, when looking at, at a painting. Um, I'm going to wrap this up by sharing that this um, painting by Charles Russell is titled The Snow Trail um, from 1897. Um, and it's not a painting that we often have on display in the museum, so I'm really um, happy that we got a chance to, to look at it and talk about it today, because I don't, I don't get many chances to actually look at this painting. Um, but um, I'll, I'll leave a comment or I'll leave a, a link in the description um, of this 
video where you can find this painting on their website. Um, but while this is the end of our recorded program, um, we'd really like to keep the conversation going for those who are watching at home. So if you have an observation um, about the painting that you'd like to share, please do leave it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and see what you notice in this artwork. And hopefully watching this program encouraged you maybe to take a pause in your day and slow down and engage deeply with um, a work of art with us. So um, thank you everyone for joining us for Tea and Talk today.